Hey there, my name's Booth Armstrong, and I'm the director of the Oak City Kids Program. And I'm excited about connecting and continuing to share with all of the Oak City Kids through this weekly video. Last week, we talked about uh, the foundations of our faith, and we talked about uh, God's goodness. Uh, once again, the foundations of our faith are, our faith is the, the trust and belief that we have in God, and the foundations of our faith are the reasons that we believe and trust God. And last week, we talked about one of the foundations of our faith is God's goodness. This week, I'm excited about sharing uh, about Jesus and Jesus being the way. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So we're going uh, to jump right in. So first thing I want to do is, is I want to read to you from John 3. Uh, that's John 3, verse 16 and 17. And I'm going to be in the New Living Translation. Okay, so John 3, 16, 17 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There's a lot of good stuff there. So I'm gonna, we're going to unpack or talk a little bit about that. And I wanted to start with this verse because I feel like this verse does a great job of marrying last week's foundation of our faith, God's goodness, and connecting that to this week's foundation of our faith of Jesus being the way, okay? So let's read about this. For this is how God loved the world. God loved the world. This is how God loved the world. So they're about to tell us how much did God love the world? He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So God, God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son, Jesus, so that we would no longer perish, but could have eternal life. That scripture right there does such a wonderful job of joining two major foundations of our faith. The first foundation, that God is good and loves us. And the second foundation, that Jesus is our way. Awesome. Uh, and it says, God sent his son into the world, not to judge us, but to save us. Jesus came to save us. He's our rescuer. Jesus is our way. I'm going to take us to another verse right now that's going to continue to show us that Jesus is our way, another foundation of our faith. This is going to be in John 14, 6. And once again, I'm in, the, I'm in the New Living Translation. And you can get with your parents and you can get the Bible out and you can go to John 14, 6 and you can read along with me. Jesus is talking to one of the disciples. And this is what he said. Jesus told this disciple, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Okay, once again, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is telling this disciple, but he's telling us all that he is our way. The way that we have access to eternal life that the uh, John 3, 16, 17 talked about. Jesus is saying the way that we can connect with our Father, our Heavenly Father, God, is through Him, okay? So Jesus is our way. Now, I want you to see something here. Uh, I think this is so great right now, and I want to bring your attention to one thing as we recognize Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus, uh, I, I wrote this down, I want to read it. Jesus' sacrifice was so powerful that it freed us from all of the enemy's power. Jesus' life and sacrifice was so powerful that it freed us from all of the enemy's power, okay? So what did Jesus' life and sacrifice provide for us? What way did it create for us? One, as we've looked at in the scripture, Jesus' life and sacrifice got us eternal life with the Father in heaven. 
What's another thing that we know that Jesus' life and sacrifice got us, created a way? It overcame our sin. The mistakes and the poor choices we make are forgiven because of Jesus' life and sacrifice. What else did it give us that may be really important to everybody right now? Jesus' life and sacrifice gave us a way to have authority over sickness and to receive healing from a loving God. All right, now I'm gonna take you to a verse real quick. This is a really cool verse. This is Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah 53, 5. And we're in the New Living Translation. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. This is a powerful verse, y'all. I want to walk through it with you real quick. Jesus, it says, but he, that he they're talking about is Jesus. He was pierced for our rebellion. The piercing they're talking about is the nails that were driven through his hands and his feet when he was crucified and put on the cross. He was pierced so he could take care of our sin, for our rebellion, our poor choices. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. I want you to hear that one more time. When Jesus was sacrificed, they beat him and they whipped him before they put him on the cross and before he died for our sins. And so we could have a way to the Father. But it also says, the scripture also tells us that he was whipped so we could be healed. Now that healing That healing is two things. That healing is a spiritual healing to where we could be healed spiritually and we could be forgiven for our sins and that we could have connection with Father God and that we could go to heaven. But that healing is also over physical things. And that's why if you look through the New Testament, throughout the New Testament, Jesus physically heals people physically touches people and heals them from fevers and heals them from, he raises people from the dead. Jesus was whipped so we could be healed. Today's foundation of our faith is that Jesus is our way. God is good and Jesus is our way. Jesus is our way to eternal life. Jesus is our way to overcome our sin. And Jesus is our way in this specific season to combat and overcome sickness, okay? Now, like every week, we want to give the families and everybody a little activity to do to continue to visit the foundations of our faith and continue to think about God's goodness and continue to think about Jesus being the way. Just a little activity that will encourage us as we navigate this unique season. And I've got one that is special to me and I wanna share it with you all today. So, um, This is my favorite piece of artwork that's in the Armstrong house. Uh, Like everything that's really cool in our house, my wife found this. I think it was actually given to her by a friend. But this is a little canvas. And on this canvas, they have put every name or attribute that could be given to Jesus or God. And I have sat many times and just looked at this canvas to remind myself who God is in my life. And this has detailed every name and every attribute to God, okay? And I wanted to read over some of them. I'll continue to show it to you. I wanna read over some of them that are listed on here that have just, uh, that have just popped to me this morning as I was looking over it once again. Almighty, majesty, he's a redeemer, He's the way. He's a servant savior. He's our dwelling place. He's living water. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. He's our cornerstone. He's the light of the world. He's our father and he's a risen Lord. There's one on here that I just saw a minute ago right before I started the video and it jumped off to me and maybe there's something. So I just wanted to point it out to you uh, right here. It says he's a quickener. You can't see that, 
but it says he's a quickener. I just feel like there may be something on that this morning, that he's a quickener. Uh, so what I want you to do for a little activity this week, which I think would be fun and encouraging, and I think you can do this as a family, get your mom and dad involved as well. Get a poster board and y'all start writing in creative ways, make it artful, do it in different colors and have fun with it. But start writing down the different attributes and the different names that God has. You could use some of these, king, majesty, redeemer, but talk to your parents and kind of pray through what are some of the things God is and then write them down in a really creative way on a poster board. And that would be a fun activity for you to do right now just to kind of to continue to focus and encourage yourself on God's goodness. I've really enjoyed spending some more time with you. I'm excited about continuing to connect with you regarding our faith, or excuse me, the foundations of our faith. And uh, please reach out to uh, Oak City Church through our website. Uh, if there's anything we can do to bless and help your family as you navigate this unique season. Also, if you want to learn about additional connection ways or additional ways to connect with the Oak City Kids program through this season, you can reach out via our website. Uh, my email address is on our kids page, the Oak City Kids page. I love y'all. I hope this message is I hope these messages, excuse me, are encouraging you. And uh, just remember that God is good. And Jesus is the way. Love y'all.